Hey everyone, it's Paul Halliday and today we're going to look at implementing Facebook authentication with the Ionic Cloud. To get started, simply make a new Ionic app or use your current Ionic app. I'm going to run Ionic Start Facebook blank dash dash v2 and now we can cd into that directory, so cd Facebook. Then we can make a login page. So let's use the Ionic CLI to generate a login page. Ionic G page login. We can open it up in VS Code and we can start off by going to the source app app module. Then we can import our login page that we just created from pages login login. We then need to add it to our declarations and our entry components. After that, we can head over to appcomponent.ts and we can change our root page to be the login page. So we need to import the login page once again and change the root page to login page. Inside of our login page, we can add a button Inside of our login page, we need a button and the button can simply say login with Facebook. And to set up some workflow, I'm simply going to click the login button and it's going to navigate us to the home page. So we'll make a function named login. And this login function when clicked can simply take us to the home page. So ensure that we have the home page imported. And then we can run this .navcontrol.setRoot homepage. We can see if we click login with Facebook, it takes us to the homepage. So I'm going to quickly edit the template to say homepage. And for now, we'll simply say welcome to the homepage. So we click login and we see the homepage. To add Facebook authentication to our application, we'll need to install the Ionic Cloud client. To do that, in our terminal, run npm install at ionic slash cloud dash angular, and then we want to save it to the project. We then need to head over to appmodule.ts and import the cloud module and the cloud settings. So import cloud module, cloud settings from at ionic slash cloud dash angular. To make use of the cloud settings, we need to make a const cloud settings of type cloud settings. And this object needs to hold our app ID. So the core settings is simply going to hold app underscore ID. And to get this ID, we need to upload our project to the Ionic cloud. So back in our terminal now, we need to run Ionic IO init. Now, if you haven't got an Ionic.io account, you need to head over to Ionic.io and create that account, then come back to your command line and you should be able to log in and do everything that we need to do. So run Ionic IO init and you should see that we saved the app ID and the API key to our Ionic config.json. So our app ID here, we can copy paste into our app module and add it under the app ID within the cloud settings. Once we've done that, we can import the cloud module into our project and we can use the for root to provide the settings that we created up here. That's all we need to do to add the cloud client to our project. To implement Facebook auth inside of our application, we then need to head over to apps.ionic.io find the application that we made and then head over to settings, user auth, and then you should see a variety of social providers. If we select Facebook and then set up, we need an app ID and an app secret. We can get these from the Facebook developer console. So now we need to create an app over at Facebook. To do this, head to developers.facebook.com and select my apps. Underneath, we need to select add a new app. We'll need a name for this app. For the name, I'm simply going to add 
my login. Inside of the developer console, we should have Facebook login under the list of products. We can click get started. Then we need to enable embedded browser OAuth login. Press yes, and we need to add a valid OAuth redirect URI. For this, you can simply add HTTPS api.ionic.io slash auth slash integrations slash Facebook. When you've done that, simply click save and then head over to settings. Inside here, we can find our application ID and our app secret. We can take the application ID and add it back inside of our Ionic console. We can take the app secret and add that inside of our Ionic console. Then click enable. You should then see that Facebook is active within the Ionic dashboard. There's a couple of other things we need to do. And that is to add platforms that people can log in from. So if we add platform and then select Android, we need to add what you call a key hash. We can generate the key hash on a Mac by using this command. I'll add this to the description. Once you have that, copy it and add it to your key hashes within the Facebook developer dashboard. Now this is for debugging. You'll have to do a similar process for production, but keep in mind that you'll have to add a key hash for each. Then we need to add the Google Play package name. You can find that by navigating back to our project and looking inside of our config.xml. Under widget ID, the com.ionicframework.facebook ID, we can copy paste that and add it to the Facebook dashboard. Now for production, I would definitely recommend that you create your own widget ID. But for now, we'll keep it at this. Once both your package name and key hash have been added, we can simply save changes and use this package name. We can do a similar thing for iOS. So let's add the iOS platform. And for iOS, it's much simpler. We simply need the bundle ID. So we can copy paste the bundle ID here into our iOS ID. Then when we're done that, click save and use this package name again. Now we can head back over to our application and visit app.module.ts. We can tell the cloud settings that we're using Facebook to authenticate. We can add the auth key to this object, as well as Facebook. And within Facebook, we can declare a scope. Scope essentially means what permissions that we're gonna request from the user. I'm gonna leave this blank at the moment, but you could add things like user birthday and so on, you can find that all on the Facebook API. By default, this will request both the email and the public profile. So we can hit save on that. We're nearly done. The next thing we need to do is to add the Cordova plugin Facebook 4. So head over to your terminal and run Cordova plugin add Cordova dash plugin dash Facebook 4. This will install the Facebook 4 plugin to the project. We can save, and we'll also need to add the following variables. So we can use dash dash variable, app underscore ID is equal to, and then sure to put this in quotes, the app ID over at the Facebook dashboard. And then we need our app name. So we can add variable again, app underscore name, is equal to the name of the app that you created over at Facebook. When you've done that, hit enter and save it to the project. I'm going to be testing this on my Android device. So I'm going to run Ionic platform add Android. And then we can head over to our login page. Within the login page, we can rewrite this login function to firstly authenticate with Facebook. So let's import the Facebook auth and user from the Ionic slash Cloud Angular package. We can also take the auth 
login result. And we can create an async function named login. Remember that to use async, we'll have to go over to tsconfig.json and change our target to ES6. And then for now, we can delete this nav control, then inject our Facebook auth. So private Facebook, Facebook auth inside of our constructor. So we can now use this dot Facebook dot login. And you can see it returns an auth login result. So let's make a variable up top here named login details of type auth login result. And then we can say this dot login details is equal to the resolved promise of this dot Facebook dot login. Let's log this out to the console after we're done and update our function to be a promise of type void. If we head over to our login.html, we can see our button is hooked up to that login event. So when we click login with Facebook, it should attempt to authenticate with Facebook. We can surround this with a try catch to catch any errors that might happen during the login process. And then we can do console.error e if there's any errors and then run this on the device. If we now click login, I get a Facebook dialogue on my screen. And if I press continue, we can see that we get sign up was true and our login token. As well as that, we can head back over to our Ionic dashboard and click auth. Then you can see that I've authenticated with Facebook on the device. We can also look at the user object by injecting user, private user, user. Then we can get the data by using console.log this.user.social.facebook. So let's try that again. If we click login with Facebook, you can see we get the token once again, and sign up is false because we're not signing up, we're logging in. We then have the user ID which we're logging out here. And we can see the UID as well as the particular data. So you can see full name, profile picture, as well as the raw data, including email address, pictures, URLs, the lot. You may wish to save this to the device. We can then use await this.facebook.store token. And then we can hand across the token by using this dot login details dot token. To prove this works, we'll retrieve the token by using const token is equal to this dot Facebook dot get token. And we'll ensure to resolve that promise by using await. And then we'll log out the token to the console. So if we click login with Facebook once again, we can see we get our token and the fact that the sign up was false our object that includes our user data. And finally, the token that we stored to local storage and then retrieved from local storage. For a basic login implementation, we may want to check to see whether the token exists. So we can use const token is equal to the resolve promise of this Facebook.get token. If token exists, then we can simply set the root of the nav control to home page. Else, if there was no token, we can simply log in. And then if we have the login details token, we can then set root again to the home page, as well as storing the token on the device. Obviously, this implementation is very bare bones and you can change it as much as you want. So if we run this again on the device and then click login with Facebook, we get welcome to the homepage. And that's because we already had that token here on the device. Inside of our homepage, we could make a logout button. So inside of the navbar here, we could make ion buttons. And this one would be to the right. And it would simply be a button. And we could make it clear and add the ion button attribute. Then we can say log out and add a click event to log out. 
we would have to once again import Facebook auth from Ionic slash Cloud Angular. We can also import the user object, then inject it inside of our constructor. And then we can create the async logout method. And all we need to do here is simply await on this.facebook.logout. This would also remove the token from the storage. And if we ensure that we have a nav controller inside of our home.ts, we could simply use this.navcontrol.setRoot back to the login page. So if we import that, we can set the route back to the login page when somebody logs out. Let's run this on the device. And then if we click login, we can see it takes us to the home page as expected. And then if we click log out, it takes us back to the login screen after logging out. So if we log in again, you'll see that it doesn't instantly go to the home page, and that's simply because it's got to authenticate once again with Facebook. The final thing that I'm going to do is simply display a little bit of information about the user on the home page. So let's remove user from our login.ts and instead add user to our home.ts. We'll also have to remove it from the constructor inside login. And inside home, we can then inject private user, user. And perhaps on the ion view will load lifecycle. So this is when the view is about to load. We can get the user data. So remember the user data is inside this.user.social.facebook. And then we have access to these dot data and then full name, profile picture, raw data, username, and so on. So let's make the full name and we'll make some class-wide variables here. So we'll simply put full name is going to be a string. Profile picture is going to be a string and we can use this dot full name is equal to the user social Facebook dot data dot full name and this dot profile picture is equal to this dot user dot social dot Facebook dot data dot profile underscore picture. Inside of our home dot HTML, we can get rid of this welcome to the home page and we can add an ion card. Inside the card, we can make an image with the source of profile picture. I'm going to give it a height of about 300. And inside the ion card content, I'm simply going to display the full name. If we run this on the device, when we see the authenticated user, we should now have a card with the profile picture and the full name with the ability to also log out. So if we click login with Facebook, we can see that it gives us a very pixely at least profile picture and the name Paul Halliday. If we click log out, that will log us out. And when we click log in again, you'll notice it takes a little bit of a while. That's cause it's got to authenticate with the server. So if you found this video useful and you think, or you have implemented this in your Ionic 2 app, then hit that subscribe button because that supports me a lot. And of course, check out learnionic2.com for more information. My name's Paul Halliday and I'll see you in the next video.